Hello there fellow humans, it is time for another episode of Subscriber Replays and if you want to send me your replays, put them on my Discord server, link for that in the description and if you ask yourself hey, where have I been, well I have better things to do currently than spend my time on a game that is forever devolving down the road of gambling and weebs. It's not looking great. But today we're going to have a look at the Italians. Well, guess why not? Starting off with the Progetto 65, which is a auto-reloading medium that's been in the game for a very long time and for more time than half the player base has even been playing the game. But this vehicle, three shots in the clip, 350 alpha damage, solid performance overall. Turret doesn't really have any armor, but it is quite small, so if you wiggle the tank back and forth, then you are going to be able to hide it quite easily. So overall, it is a tank that just works. I mean, it, it isn't really recommended for new players at, at all. I would recommend something like a heavy tank or an E50M or a T62A in that case. But if you're already a little bit advanced, this can be a great option to pick up. Probably the bat shot is better in the speed multiple shell department at this moment. However, this thing is still quite interesting with the auto reloader and it is also not as shit as the Karo 45T but we'll get to that vehicle later now the thing about the Bajero is it doesn't really have any armor but the turret is quite small it has 9 degrees of gun depression which means if you keep this thing moving back and forth quite fast the enemy is going to have a somewhat tough time of hitting you in the first place and that is also another very important thing that is vehicle size right like a tank being large like an AMX M454 and only having armor in a certain part is a huge disadvantage, whereas a vehicle that is a lot smaller and has armor somewhere, like a T125, that's pretty decent all around. Yeah. The thing is here, we got Blob in the Progetto 65, playing this quite well here, looking at the map, what is happening, where are the enemies attacking, because you do not want to sit in front of three or four enemies that are coming towards you, attacking you. You don't want to do that, right? Because then you're just going to get shot, you're going to get killed. That is not what you want to do. Ideally, if you're a really good player, you can end up uh, using your team as sort of, uh, well, hit point bags for you then to cause damage. But if you're not really that good and you can't maximize your performance, I wouldn't recommend doing that because your teammates are going to lose your hit points. You're not going to do a lot of damage and then it's going to result in a loss. But here it is very important. Identifying the right target. This VK is essentially defenseless. He's hopeless. The other side of the map is lost. So going to here is the absolute correct choice. Learn to read a battle is what is very important, right? Look at the minimap all the damn time. What is going on? And right here, the VK was isolated, the 6TP, he can't do anything. He's going to die. And Blob is pretty much not going to get shot at here unless he's not very careful and gets shot in the back here. But he has a heavy tank covering that side that's more likely to be shot at, right? If you're here... The E100 is going to be the guy that gets shot at, not the Progetto. And if you want me to make a, a like, 25, 30 tips of how to play Blitz video, I can do that sometime. Um, but basically, I'm already summing it up here at this point because I have already have the tips. But anyway, so, again, playing from the side here. You don't want to directly sit in front of the enemy guns, especially with a medium tank, especially with a medium tank that doesn't have armor. You don't want to sit in front of the enemy. You want to be ideally on their side or behind them. But now, two versus three with that E100. And there is a Karo. Now, the Karo does have one advantage. That it does have an extra shell that it can't really use. And the third armor is more effective at certain angles. But it, the third is also larger. So, you're not really having an advantage there uh, at all. And the, it's also a lot slower. So, in this case, the Progetto is not going to have a very hard time to get away from the Karo, especially when it comes to circling around houses. And the Karo is just making a big mistake here, allowing the Progetto just to reload without any challenge. And now, he's dead, right? You want to focus on the most dangerous target, and that, in this case, isn't the E100, that is the Progetto, because the Progetto can move around the battlefield, whereas the E100 is sort of stuck in one place, right? So... If you were the enemy Progetto there, what you ideally would want to have done is not engage with the situation at all, where the Progetto and the E100 are together, and instead try to either draw the Progetto away or isolate one of the two and then fight them, because you don't want to fight multiple tanks at the same time, because then this is what happens, right? The M40 at Patton, he's low HP, he should have never pushed there, um, and should have just let the E5 go first, 
at the Progetto, empty the clip into the E5. It's not big enough to kill the E5 in one clip, so he could have done that. E5's alive, M48's alive, and they could have finished Blob off, but that is not what is happening here. The E5 is also allowing the Progetto to simply just empty his shells into him without any challenge, because it's just faster. And now, they wait for the shells to reload. The E4, E5 has no chance at even fighting back, because he can't even aim. And he only has one shell, whereas the Brita has three. Damn! It's a pretty damn good game. Very well played, well positioned all around the map, looking at the minimap. Where do you go? Where do you get the most damage? That is a very nice game there, and uh, obviously helped by the utter incompetence of the enemy team. Well done, Blob. Now, we go with the Rhinocerante, or the Rhino. This vehicle is a heavy tank. It's new in the game, and it is worth grinding, unlike the majority of other previous new vehicles, such as the WZ-131, the uh, BZ-75, which has some merits if you want the derp gun. There haven't been a really lot of good vehicles coming to the game that are actually worth grinding, but this is one of them. So, two shots right here. Also, auto-reloading, like all the other Italians at this point. This has pretty good armor on the turret, but it is flat, which means that tank destroyers and high penetration heat rounds will be able to go through the turret. Anyway, so be careful with that. The upper plate is also pretty strong. Not going to get penned through that. But overall, we have a vehicle here that is quite competitive. And the tech tree of it before is also quite solid. So you have a tank that's just, it's just worth it, right? Not the most player-friendly tank either. Like, you don't want to get this as your first heavy tank or something like that. But once you have your E100, your 60 TP, your, your base heavy tank, this can be a worthy pickup as well. Now, here's something that I can't, and that is aim. Ideally, because if you aim your shots, that KPZ would have been dead right now and would have no longer posed a threat. Because aiming for two seconds is obviously a bit better than not aiming and then having to reload for ten seconds. I don't really aim much because, quite frankly, I don't care anymore. But if you do care, just aim your shots at the enemy because that way... You're simply gonna do more damage, the enemy's gonna be dead more, and a dead enemy can't shoot back. And now that Progetto, I have honestly no idea what the enemy mediums are doing there. I mean, they have the advantage, they would have had the hill advantage, right? Two of the uh, team here of uh, Mihailos are on the island side, so taking the hill here for the enemy mediums shouldn't have been the hardest thing in the world, but they didn't, so. Especially also because the KPZ just got wrecked, but oh well. And now, having the hill here, having the high ground, is very important. Like, control a lot from the hill up here. And it's also quite hard for the enemy to get back up here, because there's only way one way to get up. There's multiple ways to get down, but there's only one way to get up. So this your there is basically nothing you can do, except use his pretty high penetration heat rounds. To actually just penetrate the Renault Ronde, because you know, that's what it can do. But he's stuck down there, right? Anywhere he moves, left side, right side of that rock, he is gonna get shot at. But now, 3 versus 6 is not really great here, but the ore reduces it to 5, and now the Karo over there is still alive. And like, as I said, I'll, I'll get into that vehicle later. I'll, I'll talk to you, people that think the Karo is OP. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you, don't worry. Um, yeah, like, what is he doing? This is, this is another problem. Like, as I mentioned in the Progetto game, being large is always going to be a disadvantage, right? Because you simply have an easier time to get shot at, right? It's a lot easier to get shot at if you're a massive piece of French than if you're tiny and sleek. And even then, you can have more armor. And now, ooh, 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 ooh. Taro's dead. The yours dead. This is now a one versus four. Now, remember, what does the enemy team have to do right now? What do they have to do? This is a two-shot auto reload, right? They have to attack all at the same time, all together, because a lot of them are one-shots. They have to go together at the same time from multiple angles, left side, right side, ideally two and two. They cannot allow this vehicle to reload those shells on point, because then, well, they're all one-shots. They are going to lose, right? They have to peek right now. Now, come on, the STV has to go right now, and uh, no, he's not really doing that too well, and he even bounces, and now, <sighs> 700 HP 
Still left. Goddamn, this STB is going to die right now. And where is the 777? Nobody waited for the 777. All three of them went at him. They did reasonably go together. But in the end, they still got completely wrecked. Because the KPZ and the all, they did peak. The STB didn't peak. He peaked once uh, the, the Rhinoceronte was turned around. Right? What should have happened there? The Rhinoceronte looking at the uh, the KPZ and the yaw. The STB is behind. The STB can peak. The KPZ and the York can't peak because they're being looked at. But they did it wrong. And this guy just runs out and, and dies. Like, Jesus. It is so impressive how easy it is to beat people in this game that have no clue. If you're a one-shot and the enemy is looking at you, don't freaking peak. Or do and then die. But yeah, amazing battle right there. Wonderfully played again, and the enemy team is just another lovely forest. And now we get to the Garo. Now he does have four shots, but you can only use three of them because the fourth one is, in more cases than not, a disadvantage than an advantage, right? Because you fire it, now you're gonna just sit there for 20 seconds and have to wait, right? There are very few cases where using that fourth shell is actually gonna be an advantage, right? Unless you're just trying to take out a one shot that's over there, but then you're helpless for the next 20 seconds So you can only do that when you're taking out a, a one shot at an enemy that is completely unopposed and alone Right, and then you're just gonna sit there 40 seconds reloading your entire clip. Now it does have more alpha damage than the Pajero by 30, which Yeah, that's gonna make a big difference really it is, however, significantly slower, while well, not being really better armor, right? You're still going to be able to easily penetrate the turret, unless it's a, at extreme hold-down angles, where the car isn't able to use the gun depression, because once you're in the range of using the gun depression, you, the armor can be penned, so that's great. And you have three shells. Just have a little bit more alpha damage than Brigitte, but what it gives up for that is the real big problem, and that is quite a substantial amount of its mobility, and a vehicle like this absolutely lives off its ability to move around the battlefield dynamically. And the Karo simply is not as good at that as Progetto is. Also, with the force shell, you simply can't allow yourself to fire that thing, because if you do, you're not fast enough to run away from most other medium tanks, because if somebody counts your shells, you fire the fourth one, you're now completely screwed because not only do you have to wait 20 seconds for that shell to reload, you have to wait 30 seconds because if you fire the fourth shell again, congratulations, you're now down to a DPM of about 1200. Yeah, that's not very really helpful, is it? So, it is not really as big of an advantage as you might think it is. So, overall, what we have here, we have one of the lower tiers of tier 10 collector vehicle. On the same level as an M60, which is pointless because it doesn't actually make credits on the same level as a 121B, which is pointless because it's not as good as the 121 and the 907 because the 907 is kind of pointless as well. There is a T22, there is the KPZ 50. You don't need this damn thing. I mean, if you enjoy it, hey, it seems to be the case right here. The enemy team is completely incompetent. Nobody's actually doing any damage to Deep Dark here whatsoever for the most of this battle. Being completely ignored is absolutely fun. But now, here's two shells. There isn't two. There's one shell in the, in the vehicle loaded right now because you fire that fourth one, that is it. Right, and now he's going to have to do exactly that. Fire that fourth shell and now get the hell out of there. If that KPZ is competent, which he isn't. That's it. That is it right there, because you're gonna need two shells to finish that KPZ. And now, I don't really know what the, the idea was between, like, going around the house here again, firing that fourth shell, and now you have to spend another 20 seconds going around this house. And a Pugetto, this would have never been a problem, because you don't have to reload for half an hour. Now, WZ and the KPZ, uh, the WZ are pushing forward, and... Yeah, what are you gonna do? You have to fire the shell, but they're both incompetent. Look at them. Look at them. And now now that now there's the third shell, there it is, and now they still don't have any shells. How dumb are these people? 
Like, all I have to do is like, go one side, go the other side, and he's dead. I'm just baffled. Like, I don't understand anything anymore. It just doesn't make any sense at this point. Like, six kills. This is insane. The object's, I don't know, sitting over there jerking himself or something like that. MSWZ. What are you doing? Oh my god. And that is kill number seven. Holy crap. I mean... All the downsides I told you about with Akaro, they don't really matter if, your if the enemy team is that shit. So, to sum it up, Vegetto is the better choice, you don't need the Akaro, but goddammit, teams are stupid these days.